secret friends unite! Welcome to the Secret Friends Unite podcast, episode 492. This is your guide to the geek side. And I am Todd Oxtra, and I am fully prepared for this fall season, spooky times, and pumpkin drinks. Pumpkin. I had one this afternoon, uh, this morning, after playing a vigorous round of pickleball. That's right, I'm back on the courts with my knee, got my brace on. Uh, but no, I was out there playing uh, playing doubles this morning, and we treated ourselves to a little PSL from Starbucks on the way home. Had a free drink, too. April Epistle. No points. Epistle. Uh, but yeah, no, this is uh, Charlie. Hello. Uh, we've got some kind of fall-like weather today. Excited about that. We've been having a heat wave here in the Midwest, which is ridiculous. Uh, we bitch about it, but then Todd, you and I, you know, two months from now, to be like, oh, it's 12 degrees outside. What happened to summer? We can never stop whining in the Midwest. That's what we do. <laughs> the whining. <laughs> I normally don't complain about the cold. I said that yeah. it's the cold is expected. The heat, though, where we live... Yeah. That's not what we're expecting as heat. It's a little so, weird, yes. No one yeah. expects this. That wasn't part of the deal, Mother Nature. There's so, a deal. Uh, the, with the, the Minnesota deal. And here in Michigan. Are we electing, are we electing another a new Mother Nature this year? Because I might have a good candidate. You think so? Is it is it Tim yeah. Walls? Do you think so? You think you do that job no. too? Father Nature. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. We'll talk about oh, okay. that in a second. Very good. But anyway, uh, friends, welcome. We got a great show. As always, we're talking about Transformers 1, the first animated Transformers feature length uh, animated project since 1986. Uh, so we will give you our impressions on that. But before we do that, as always, we kick off the show. Uh, by giving homage to the wonderful people that make us make it possible for us to bring you guys uh, more extended content. And that is our Secret Friends Squad over at patreon.com slash Secret Friends Unite, where for the uninitiated, you can try us out for seven days for free uh, and listen to our great programs, including the Facts of Geek Life. I'm advertising for myself today with my shirt, if you're watching us on YouTube. Um, but The Spinner Rack, great show that Todd and I do together where we talk about comics. Over on my show, we, I would talk about TV. Uh, we also have fun new programs, including Todd's fantasy football that he does with Sean Nias, the Waver Wire Wizards. I know that means something to you. Uh, you're now in your third week, and we just recorded a Spinner Rack, the comic show, about a recent run of DC Comics, The World's Finest. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of fun and very enjoyable. And again, patreon.com slash Secret Friends Unite for a trial for seven days. Our besties, Chris 1H1D, great dude. Chris records with us pretty frequently. My buddy Derek, the figure dude here from Grand Rapids. Francie, who is my wife's awesome hairdresser. If you needed a, uh, your curly hair dressed here in West Michigan, she's a lady for you. Uh, Xbox Expansion Pass, our pal Luke Lore, also a frequent contributor. And my awesome Uncle Tim, my only family member who really believes in us, Todd. Makes you feel special. Uh, on our friends with benefits level, Mr. John Sidorf, uh, the awesome Phoenix Sisters Entertainment, uh, frequent collaborator Kelly and her partner Crayley, Brendan Myers, Corian HD, and friend of the show, Matthew Keel. And last, but certainly not least, already mentioned, uh, the awesome Nias family of the Twin Cities, Todd's pals, uh, Sean, Stella, and Henry, we are very grateful for all that you guys do for us and your wonderful support. Remember, you can visit us at patreon.com slash Secret Friends Unite for all that stuff. Todd, moving into the next section where I'd, you're going to have to break it down for me because this was a this was a trend uh, from uh, in the early 90s. This cover here is from May of 1993. You'll see it if you're looking at us on YouTube. But uh, this is the first one of this type I think we've talked about, or at least the first one that I can remember in a long time. So what's going on? So yes, um, this is, and we've got this covered this month. We've got May's 1993 cover of X Factor number 92. This is part of a crossover event called Fatal Attractions. Um, it says Fatal Attractions out of the light into new thy father's shadow. So this has got an awesome cover by Joe Casada. Joe Quesadilla, who he Joe was the head honcho of Marvel. He was uh, he was drawing the book, and Peter David was writing the book at the time. Ooh, yes, and Peter awesome David. cover, but it's made even better because it had a hologram of Havoc on the cover. Oh, I love which, it. Which, quite honestly, I don't know if um, if I found that cover, and I could go into my comic bin, it's there. I'd be curious if the hologram has eaten into 
like the 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 bag itself if it's right. faded or, can i even see it anymore or if it starts to fade so i i have a i have a parliamentary question about the x books mm-hmm. back in this period now in 1985 x factor debuted and it was a purposeful book it was the original x-men and they were posing as a mutant elimination force to the public facing but their mission was to to basically find new mutants and recruit them um then we got X-Force several years later. Of course, there's the Uncanny X-Men going on. By this point in the early 90s, was there any difference in any of these X-Teams? Like X-Factor, I don't, I don't know if they still had the same mission at this point, but it's none of the same people because just, you know, Havoc has got that ridiculous outfit. He's Cyclops' brother. Love it. Alex, yeah. Uh, Wolvesbane is on the team, but she was originally a new mutant. I don't know who the mm-hmm. guy in white is. Uh, I just like, I just don't know who was on the team at this time. And like, so... If, what the deal was. So part of X factor was, yes, they originally were the original X-Men masquerading as like the people that were going to take down the X-Men. They were like secret agency, uh, but it was the original X-Men coming back. And I remember I was so excited because at the time I was like, Oh, I could get into the ground floor of like an X-Men book. So I subscribed. Right. And it came in the horrible brown bags and half the time it was in dire straits, but I love that team. Um, And that's the book that introduced uh, Apocalypse, which was pretty cool. Right. Um, Yeah. Uh, Walt Simonson did some of the, the, the work on that book, which was great. Um, But X-Factor continued to be, uh, basically had a government alliance with the mutants. So this was essentially continued with that era. So like Val Cooper, uh, continued as kind of an agent yeah. that was working with the team. On this book, we got Havoc, Multiple Man, uh, or a.k.a. Madrox, Jamie Madrox, basically yeah. that guy. Quicksilver was on the team, which was a unique take because we yeah, typically totally. have Quicksilver He's being aligned typically. with a mutant team. Yeah. Uh, Polaris, so that would be you know Magneto's daughter, and uh, Strong Guy, which was, he was, he was his name was Guido. Character. He had like the Guido. one little hair. Yeah, like the right. baby Huey hair, which was weird, but he was a really <laughs> cool character. And, and yeah, so that was the team. And then they added a guy named Random to the team. That was Random? his original. Random. So he's he was kind of like Marvel's answer to like Lobo. He's like, he's the dude. <laughs> he could randomly change like his arm into like a cannon, do things like that. So you're supposed to be oh like God. a badass in the Marvel realm. So supposed um, to be. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. So this was That's the crazy. era where Magneto was getting his acolytes together, basically Astro oh, okay. M doing that type of thing. So it was a big part of that where there was going to be a huge you the know, battle showdown. between Magneto, yeah, and yeah. so Fatal Attractions, Earth. that's what it's, why it's called that oh, way. And then okay. Polaris being part of it, which she has magnetism as well. Oh, very good. So there you go. Very interesting. So yes, the But the yeah, 90- come for the yeah. story, stay for the cool hologram. Please the, do. That's now, the message of this tale. It may not have a hologram, but if you're interested in reading this title, you can most likely find it on Marvel Unlimited, which again, that's one of the best deals out there if you're not familiar with Marvel Unlimited. It's worth every nickel. So, uh, something. So, speaking of nickels, uh, I think it's time for our weekly pay drop-off to our senior news correspondent, Madam Webb. As always, uh, she's waiting for us down at the corner of Hollywood and Vine. She's got all the latest scoops without the other thing, but let's go check it out right now. Now it's time for Madam Webb's rumors and news. Take it away, boys. Thank you, Madam Webb. As I mentioned, that uh, I really think we need to take care of this Mother Nature lady. She is not doing a good job. She's apparently turning the weather topsy-turvy. So this fall, I'll be voting for Madam Webb, a.k.a. Madam Weather. Wow, she, that's a sweet job for her. The only thing she's got, got to really worry about there uh, is Cobra's weather dominator, and I don't think they have a chance. I'm just saying. Mm. I'm just saying. I don't. I, I don't know. I don't know. She's pretty tough. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure Elon Musk is working on it. <laughs> oh God! Ooh. There's a name I also will be happy not to hear so much about if things go the way we need them to in November. But I digress. Uh, sliding into, we got a couple movie trailers this week. Now this one kind of came out of nowhere. I hadn't heard a thing about this. I. Was this on your radar and we just had never talked about it? It, it was. I had heard that they were making this film and it had been made a while ago and then they released it like they were going to release a trailer and then I got held back. Um, but uh, this film, Mickey 17 by Bong Joon-ho, uh, he's the guy who made Parasite, an Oscar winning yeah, yeah. film. And he decided he wanted to do this 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 adaptation of Mickey 17, which is a based on a book. Mm-hmm. And it is a very unique take on Robert Pattinson playing essentially a disposable human, an expendable yeah. a clone. Uh, in the future, yeah. where people can apparently 
volunteer to be an expendable where they take your body type and everything. And then if you die, you just get brought back. Right. Um, don't you know like, much details about like it. The silence, um, you know. right. So yeah. here's my question. And again, yeah, this trailer was about two and a half minutes. Just shows him in all these wacky situations where he's getting killed. And then they take whatever's left of it and they just kind of dump it in a magma hole. They put you down the bin. Um, yep. And so my question is uh, about the premise of this film. Why would somebody sign up to do this? It just well, he said I mean, he did adventures because he said yeah. he didn't have much to live for, and it's yeah. like apparently he's like I can do cool things, and yeah, yeah, he's doing cool things, basically putting his life on the line in different yeah. environments. They show different ways he dies. Yeah, and yeah, he's he gets out there in space, and he's looking yeah. at his hand, loses and a hand, chopped off, and then he gets eaten by like ice monsters and this different. Yeah. And then yeah, the cap to this trailer is that he wakes up, uh, he lays down in bed, and then another him sits sits up. So they didn't do their math right. And they cloned him before the other guy was dead. And so uh, they ended, yeah, the, a lot of the back and forth is like, well, okay, let's flip a coin and whoever loses, get, you know, that's the one that will shoot in the head. So it just, it, it appears to be a comedy. But again, it's interesting because your director uh, is obviously, he's a heavy. I mean, he directed a very mm -hmm. serious film. So this seems to be kind of a slapsticky, silly comedy. So I, yeah, I just, I'm curious how the tone's going to play out. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's definitely got a comedic take. It's it's they basically say it's it's a social satire. The book is a social satire. Yeah. Um, and the cast is pretty amazing. Naomi Aki, Stephen mm -hmm. Yoon, uh, Tony Collette, and Mark Ruffalo. All yeah. great. Uh very did interesting. You, a lot of chewing the say, scenery here. You say Mark Ruffalo? Roof. 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 The Ruffalo. The Ruffalo. Yes. The, the Ruffalo's Ruffalo. on fire. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yes. Yes. Uh so uh, there's going to this is going to be very interesting. And there's already a sequel to this book, and there's a third on the way. So they even, you know, potentially this could be a if it's if it does well, this could there could be more here. Right. But I just love the tone. It's very interesting. Yeah. Robert Pattinson, you know, I love the how he's his career has developed where he he can play anything he can play He's dark chameleon. fire yeah. he can play sparkly uh, romantic lead he can play you know that that movie <laughs> the lighthouse apparently is what he's supposed to be creepy as hell with him and right. defoe sure in that movie so i'm glad that he's escaped you know being typecast i mean right. it's funny you went from yeah, being uh, the vampire to now oh you're you're batman that's not a role yeah. you get typecast for there you go exactly and this is a january release i think it said january 31 january 31st yeah, yeah. so that's cool so we got some something fun to look forward to so uh something i don't know that i'm super looking forward to because it's kind of same old same old um, but I know there's legions of fan. My son, very, very big fan of Minecraft. Uh, was that, was that too late for your son? I mean, I know he's 18. Oh now. no, no, yeah. it's, it's, it's every kid finds Minecraft. It yeah, is exactly. evergreen as it gets. Yeah. Minecraft's on everything, tablets, phones, uh, computers, right. Probably on your refrigerator right now as we speak. Exactly. It is exactly. as simple as it's, it's building block Lego before Lego yep. got on, on board with it. It's a survival right. game. And then half of it is just people making content and it's going on the internet. So it is right. the, it is probably one of the, probably top 10 things um on youtube as we speak uh, oh, gotcha. i don't think it's it's fallen off and i'd rather have that so, than yeah. like more mr beast or uh <laughs> other dorks right um so yeah so this is being turned into a live action film uh with some relative heavies i guess you've got aquaman and you've got jack black uh has jack you know are people sick of jack black yet I mean, I, know I think we're getting to that point because saturation. he was in Jumanji. He was in. Right. He was the voice of um, Bowser in the Mario movie. Oh, gotcha! Uh, and what he else was, was in he in too? Borderlands, which tanked, but I don't think it's because of him. Oh yeah, as a voice yeah. actor again. As a voice actor. Um, but in this, yeah, he's himself I mean, with a crazy beard. He's Steve, as he identifies himself in the trailer, and that's the main. Yeah. Isn't that the main guy in that? And then you've you've got a couple of kids. You got the a young lady who was Enid in Wednesday. I looked her up because I was like, oh, I recognize oh, okay. her. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. And Great. then you've got you've got Jason Momoa, as I had mentioned, and then some other kid. Uh, so Jennifer Jason, Coolidge is in this, and Jennifer, Jennifer Coolidge, Coolidge. She's cool. Yeah. She's big with the kids. So like, oh wow, yeah, Stifler's mom, exactly, big, very yeah. big with the kids. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have I have no doubt one way or the other. Um, that this could very much go either way. Cause you look at it and say, Oh my God, it's a sure thing. But how many sure things in recent memory have just driven over a cliff? I just don't know. Yeah. Yeah. The borderlands was a complete disaster. Yeah. Uh, obviously Minecraft, depending if kids love it. I mean, the Mario movie was fun, but was it perfect by all means? No, but they yeah. kept it animated. They didn't do the humans in the Mario world, which they did in, you know, the first movie live. Action. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. 
a lot of people are not happy about the animation style though. Like it's like blocky characters that are kind of not, it's not like they're just going in the world looks like the video game. Right. It's like a hyper stylized version where the, the sheep I mean, are what, blocky, but they're still fuzzy. Right. So I mean, weird. What, what else could you do? You know I mean? How could I you don't know. Out? Just yeah. they just could do that style. There is a Minecraft <laughs> video game, Charlie, where pa- Patton Oswald voices um, the, the character of Steve, or I think it is Steve, or maybe a character. But it's that's like just a regular story within Minecraft. So yeah. and that's more narrative. It's got a plot, things like that. So th- yeah. they have done that. So they could have just adapted that for it. But I don't know. Um, right? Yeah, I don't know when. When, when are we getting this one? Uh, this one is coming out. That is weird. Oh, April 4th, 2025. So good time okay. for a movie to come out. Um, and at that point, oh, I mean, my, the director my, of this. My, my wife's birthday. She'll be so thrilled. <laughs> yeah. The director of this, Jess, Jared Hess, he did Nacho Libre. He did. Um, Napoleon Dynamite. Napoleon I looked it up. Dynamite yeah. and Gentleman Bronco. So, you know, a good, Bronco. good director. He's not like just yeah. some scrub. So I'm hoping yeah, his right. weird and wackiness will right. mean we get something fun. Right. Well, hopefully, you know, the name recognition will help drive this. And this is pre-summer because, I mean, even our summer movie yeah. major kicks off um, the beginning of May. So this is a month before that. So yep. maybe this will be the, this will either be a factor leading up to the summer movie started or it'll be a fart that goes away real quickly. Or it means that say. the summer movie starts in April now. <laughs> yeah, exa- <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just keep driving it back. So, well, I will I will be curious. I won't. Um, I don't know that I'll talk april into seeing this but uh, we'll find out um all right i uh moving into our next story i finally after three years um because we're doing our mcu watch through watched spider-man no way home because i avoided it because there it was very sad i'm sure you've seen the movie but you know aunt may dies and that really bummed me out and peter parker lost everything and that really bummed me out um but re-watching this film i had forgotten just how damn good it is Holy crap! This, it was. It was I know you. You'd not been like you're like. Oh, I'm like, but it's a good movie. It really was, and and it, it to yeah. underscore the point, it is much to the credit of being what the Peter Parker character is all, always about. He always loses so that other people can win. Yeah. Other people exactly. can live. That, that's the character. So, um, so yeah, I was re-energized by that. And, of course, I've been a Spider-Man fan since I was 10 years old. Um, but it's looking like, you know, after that movie, mm-hmm. Spider-Man's fate is, you know, very uncertain because, you know, Doctor Strange had to erase the fact of his identity from everyone who's ever known him in order to save people's, you know, to, to cure the multiverse. But now it's looking like the character is going to potentially come back. And, again, this is a rumor. And I always like to be very firm with my rumors because it's from a scooper <laughs> named Daniel, D- Daniel Richman, which kind of sounds like a made up name. Sorry, Daniel, if you're listening, which I'm sure you're not, uh, that we could be looking at a new trilogy and uh, his continued involvement uh, in the Avengers film. So uh, I know that Tom Holland had a six or seven picture deal, which I believe was satisfied uh, by by moving him all the way through this last picture. And one thing um, I, oh God, now I'm forgetting the source, but there was uh, something, oh, oh, it was something related to, um, oh, it was in Deadpool. Um, they they had a picture, you know, there was the picture of Tony Spark, Tony Spark, uh, yeah, Tony Stark. And Tony Stank. Parker, Tony Stank shaking hands. And that picture was slightly obscured so you didn't see Tom Holland, so it wouldn't count for one of his pictures, <laughs> which I thought was weird. Um, but yeah. Of the spider man out there, and of course that movie threw all the all the spider man into the mix. Tom Holland has been my favorite, so I'm in, I'm enthused to hear that he could come back and do more. Hopefully, he won't have something to do with the little blob of venom that got left behind. You know, when Tom Hardy was in the universe and then left, which I thought that that was a stinger in that movie. I thought that that was fun, but um, yeah, I don't know. This is the only Spider Man thing that that I feel like. I, this is the most spider man news that we've had in a while because the, the Spider-Verse is just a drift. Who the hell knows when we're going to see one of those movies again? But I don't know. What do you think? They could, I mean, as a as someone who enjoys Spider-Man but maybe is not so steeped in it, what do you think, if they launch a new trilogy, what do you think the storyline would be? What What villain would they roll out? So what do I think, Charlie? I think. Yeah. So. All right. Money. 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 Um. If money, you're going to have, uh, you know, Tony Stark coming back, who is going to react to Tony Stark? Probably, you know, that isn't dead already because I don't or, think we're going to see Rogers back. 
or at least his face. You know what I mean? Because we know it's we know Correct. it's going to if yeah, if it's that way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is which right. is going to be weird once again. So, is he going to truly yeah. be Victor Von Doom, or is he going to actually just be uh, Tony Stark gone wrong? So, I don't know. Right. It'll be just kind of weird coincidentally right. that uh, you're two different people, but that's your same face. So, usually right. they, that doesn't play that way. Typically, the the uh, the other universes, you get the same looking person playing the same. Yeah. Yeah. person or character but they've gone wrong somehow right so either that or we just get a horribly disfigured uh victor von doom that has the voice of robert downey jr but not the name of tony Stark. Which you know you, is, we don't see yeah. him luck that way i don't know right it's weird but this uh if you scroll to the bottom here it, it says a couple of things that <clears throat> this could potentially set up the possibility for spider-man to interact with the fantastic four which is very big because that's a very traditional relationship in the marvel comics those were two of the flagship titles in the very beginning fantastic four being the first and spider-man uh really being the second of the of the main ongoing titles and it does give an expected drop date of this uh to be uh basically the wolverine deadpool and wolverine slot of late july in 2026 uh, so this would be something that I would expect to go into production uh, first part of next year. So I am all for it uh, because, again, like I said, Tone, uh, Tom Holland is he's my spider guy. I like him. I like him. He's the he's one great. that I think I think he kind of fits the the spider bill. So, yeah, so I'm 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 fired up about this more spider Manning, And again, I even revisiting that film, while it did make me sad, it was really true to uh to what spider-man's all about so it's and he brings about all the people to the yard because right now i don't think marvel has a specific like existing person right now that would excite people to come back at such a big scale right. as spider-man he's obviously one of the biggest characters of all time right he's a generator so to have spider-man missing and then yeah. we're gonna have nobody else you need some yeah, you got to have some a hook. real hook. character to, to really drive everybody home. Uh, yeah, because oh. I don't expect uh, Wolverine and Deadpool <laughs> to be back soon. Right. Uh, as people would expect. And there's not going to be multiple movies because that I don't think it would They're gonna uh, be, resonate as he's much. He's going to be playing the character till he's 90. 90. Exactly. Well, uh, this next story uh, has to do with uh, a guy who's been in some films uh, who turned down being in some other films. <laughs> So James McAvoy, at one point or another, uh, turned down playing uh, Tom Riddle in Harry Potter, which went to Robert Pattinson. So f finds his way back into our new segment. And he, uh, despite being a big trekker, which I guess I didn't really realize that, turned down uh, a chance to be in one of the J.J. Star Trek films, to which I say, good man. <laughs> You didn't play Tom Riddle, Charlie. No, he did. He What's did his not. name? Pattinson didn't. No, he played. Uh, 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 oh, so, so, yeah. Pattinson Sorry. didn't play Tom Riddle. He played uh, the one of the folks who do uh, that died. Um, yeah, Voldemort killed him in the Dark Dimension or whatever. But it was yeah. Yeah. So, but Tom Riddle guy. wasn't that. Was that uh, was that uh, Doctor Who? The Doctor Who guy. Ten, Ooh, David Tom Riddle, <clears throat> no, David no? that was that's Barty Crouch. Barty Crouch. Well, who was Tom Riddle then? Who he eventually uh, became? Actor you probably wouldn't recognize. Well, him, <laughs> oh, who, oh, oh, like, well, they didn't have the same character play Tom Riddle as we did Voldemort. So unless yeah, he was going to play not. Voldemort, which he didn't, yeah, right, right, that was Ray Fine. Oh, very good, gotcha. So what was? Oh, yeah, McAvoy was approached to play uh, Scotty, which is the role that ultimately went to. Uh, the dude whose name I'm forgetting. Who is the guy who was Scotty in the JJ films? It was the Shaun of the oh, Dead. Oh, you're guy. thinking of <laughs> Shaun of the Dead, yes. Um <laughs> You see, you can't I know brain it works, yes. Um, yes, I know who you're talking about. But uh he would have been great because uh McAvoy is a Scot. He's a Scotsman. Uh but it was who the hell is the guy? He's big in genre circles. What the hell is his name? Simon Pegg. Thank Simon you. Pegg. Yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah, like I said, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of those series. My wife likes the JJ movies. One of the people in our chapter is a big JJ fan. She's a young girl. That's fine. Uh, and he, he would have done great in the role, but I, I prefer to keep, I, I prefer to keep him stink free when it comes to my Star Treks. Um, so, but, uh, yeah, we just saw our, uh, that movie that we just saw the speak no evil. Todd, are you going to go see that one? 
No. I have not seen it yet. I will no. probably wait till it's available in streaming. Yeah, yeah, no, but it was it was good, and he was good in it, so he's very very intense. So, uh, yeah, all right. Well, this last one, you, you snuck this last one in on me. What's going on in movie theaters? In like, so movie late? theaters are starting to invest into making more the the actual movie theater more of a entertainment space rather than just come and see movies okay. um, which makes a lot of sense because <clears throat> right now the movie theaters are pretty empty i mean when i go to the the, the local theater i go to it has a restaurant upstairs it's not being used it's okay. pretty dead yeah. people aren't coming and hanging out at a movie theater because they're just showing up beforehand and going and leaving so right. how do you get people to stick around spend more money make it right. more of a uh hey we don't have to leave we can stay here we can do something else well it they're saying basically uh we need to invest into making it a, an entertainment destination so now they're talking about spending up to 2.2 billion dollars nato the national association of theater owners for nato oh my it's god it's a different nato yeah it's exactly NATO. um so they're looking to um, add in, obviously, improve the theater experience with better chairs, better sound per, per, sound and uh, uh, projectors as well. Right, but they're right. also looking to add in um, miniature golf courses potentially. Pickleball, uh, it's got to be pickleball, ball right? Courses, yeah, yeah. Jump on that trend, uh, uh, maybe a little late, which is always a good idea. I know, uh, I, I know, I want to get, all, I know, I want to get all worked up playing pickleball and be sweaty and disgusting, and then sit down and watch the next Spider Man movie. I'm all for it. Let's do it. Exactly. Or after a movie, after you had all those snacks, go play some pickleball. It makes total yeah, exactly. sense. Yeah, exactly. um, it it, it kind of because they've got these big spaces, it's really what do you do with that space to uh, make up what movie theaters have been lacking and also uh, get people out of the house and out to do something, make it a destination, right. maybe have a, a restaurant. Like the Alamo, um, Alamo Draft oh, House, Alamo um, I have one. one. Yeah. 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 They, they, it's so funny because they got rid of several of them. Like they said, Oh, these are going away. I'm like, what? It was one of them was mine. One was then six in Texas. Well, Sony bought Alamo. Um, yeah, and now were, brought them back and they back said, out. Hey, by the way, we're going to give people that were uh, impacted. We're going to give them raises. They're going to come back and we're going to invest, reinvest. And I was like, that's awesome. But it's yeah. a cool area. I mean, it's basically, you can get food delivered to you, which was what they were one of the first ones to do that. Yeah. They inspired other ones. Um, but they also have a really cool restaurant in the front, which I really liked. It was really tasty. It's like, you could just go in and have food there and it wasn't bad. Yeah. So, um, I think we are going to see heightened movie experiences because if it's a crappy experience, just stay home, right? This could be very transactional. It's not worth the expense. Yeah, yeah. And this, yeah. I mean, you know, and COVID broke that, the lockdown in, in, in particular broke that for a lot of us. Hey, like, yeah, I can just sit and watch it and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, yeah if you don't, you're right. If you don't make it an experience and like, hey, we want some more of your money. So yeah, if it's not the, you know, multiplex pickleball, pinball, golf simulator, whatever. Throwing axes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Throwing, yeah, exactly. Com comedians are playing. You yeah. don't want to have throwing axes in the movie theater, but uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I am. Um, that's cool. As long as they don't do like uh, like mall kiosks where they're also trying to sell you cell phones or you know funny T shirts or anything. Let's just let, just keep the kiosks out of it. That's that's my only request. Don't need nothing chintzy. Make it you know high end. Uh, wow, for, yeah. didn't realize the kiosks were a uh, touch point. I get. Well, it's just. I mean, don't they just kind of gross you out? Like, hey man, buy 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 a buy a case for your cell phone with rhinestones in it. I mean, it's just. I just. I, I just. I you know, it just seems. If you're going for a higher end vibe, I, I don't think that's the one. So anyway, yes, if I touched a nerve and putting down anybody who works in that business, I apologize. It's just not my thing. Sorry. <laughs> always, always picking, always picking at that scab, right? I know. Right? Yeah. I'm a tough one. All right. Well, that does it for the news. Todd, got to get out that Fuber app, that feeble Uber app. We are due down at the Geek Easy, the nastiest place in town. It's so gross that normal cabs won't even go there. So we have this 1970s jalopy uh, taxi pulling up, uh, smoke bellowing out of the back. We get it in the car. It smells like death. The AM radio is playing, and I hear this advertisement. Hey, Secret Friends Unite, let me tell you about Zencaster. We use them for our show, and now they're supporting us. Zencaster is now the all-in-one solution making podcasting easy. It's the ultimate web-based podcasting solution. It provides high-quality audio and video podcast production and hosting. With a full suite of professional tools, podcasters can seamlessly record, produce, and publish studio-quality content all from one dashboard. Being a creator has never been easier. 
And we chose Zencaster because of the ease of use, uh, high quality output, and we it makes it super easy for our guest to come on. Uh, we had multiple solutions we tried before, and Zencaster has just been the best fit for us. Why Zencaster? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high-quality podcast right away. Record studio-quality sounds and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi-layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. Have you ever worried what you sound like? Zencaster's post-production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. So if you're interested in making an easy, high-quality podcast just with the click of a browser button, Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code SFU1. You'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Now back to the show. Talk nerdy to me. Talk nerdy to me. We're sitting in the Geek Easy. Drinks are poured. Cover band's playing. And we are ready to get our nerd on. This week, I watched part of something and the whole thing of something else. That's so like I will ta- start with. It's like two thirds. You got two thirds of watching two things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I could bore you with my, you know, our Halloween baking championship show, which I know Charlie <laughs> loves, uh, which is a big fan of like spooky season. I love people making baked goods. It's sure. it's entertaining. It's it's good. It is, man. They're making food. I, hey, cool you know is what? That? If you enjoy it, that's all that matters. Doesn't matter what anybody else thinks at all. I know it's no no no. I know it's no NCIS Origins or. Oh my god! Um, it's it's so yeah. funny that you say that because I, I I I saw that headline because the there's a show starting up, uh, and I texted to my mom and I said, "Are you all over this?" She says, "No, I'm kind of over NCIS." And I said, "Excuse me?" She said, "Yeah, they canceled the Hawaii one that I loved, and the one in Australia was terrible." I said, "Yeah, we watched." That one we watched one episode of that and it was just very paint by the numbers. So I'm like, wow, if NCIS can lose my mother, she's their only demographic. Boomers in their 70s. That's who watches NCIS. If it was that bad, I man, because I thought the regular NCIS was horrible. So it's, and it's still go. on. They're in like their 30th season or something. It's totally ridiculous. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, cool, Jay, man. You get to keep no, the no, NCIS no. LA the, going. That's LA. Yeah. No, the, the, but yeah, the that's what I'm saying. Still, the, yeah, the franchise the doesn't stop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It never dies. Uh, yeah. So what I did watch all of was Agatha All Along, episode Woo! one and two. Charlie also watched it, but uh, I showed my wife the trailer. She did not really watch much WandaVision. Um, she's not a big Marvel head when it comes to just watching stuff. She liked Miss Marvel. And uh, I showed her this. She's like, I'm all in because nice. she's like, it's about a bunch of witches. It's not about all the Marvel crap I have to care right. about. Zero, so like, zero Marvel crap. No, he, no superheroes or, or villains. Yeah, so if far, you really, if you really wanted to, you could just watch. Hey, how did WandaVision end? And just right. give me the five minutes. Watch that. Don't really, I you would could not watch, recommend. You yeah. could probably watch the last episode of WandaVision, and there'll be a previously on at the beginning of that, which, which was what, which was the worst episode of WandaVision, by the way. Yeah, oh, with, the, with, on, the two, like, with the two visions uh, having a theological discussion, and yeah, well, yeah, also that you know, basically a big power blowout, and then you also got like, oh. I'm so sad. I'm like, you did horrible things to these people. Why are we feeling sorry for you, Wanda? Yeah. And so, yeah, and yeah. she didn't make anything. You any lost be- fake children. <laughs> yeah, and she didn't make things any better, better for herself, which she did next in the Doctor Strange movie. So Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, as like I said, but I think the run-up to it was pretty cool, and you can yeah. watch that. But obviously, Agatha Harkness is back, brought back mysteriously. We don't know completely how and why. Right. We do know there's a young gentleman who I think wants to be a witch who has uh, saved her. But the first episode was great because it was like a um, true detective type it was, of show. It was spoofing uh, the, uh, I think it was an HBO series, the Mayor of East Town or Mayor of East to Town. Sure. Because yep. that was, yeah, it was yeah. Kate, uh, Kate Winslet series that spawned the awesome SNL sketch where they're making fun of the Philly accent. I didn't murder your dirter and put her in the worder. <laughs> So we get that for the fr- basically almost the whole first episode is yeah. that type of thing this is part where of the they're spell. investigating a murder yeah. Yeah. and uh, we do get um, 
I'm blanking on her name. Uh, Aubrey, from Aubrey, Parks and Rec. Aubrey Plaza shows up. Aubrey Plaza shows up as a detective from the FBI uh, to investigate the murder. And that's where it kind of all goes, you know, right, I guess, where yeah. she's broken out of the the show and shows up naked, says, In, where yeah. am I? And she basically, yeah, she gets brought back to the, the town where she had taken over. So right. uh, she runs into some familiar faces. And the whole premise of the show is just basically getting the the, the team together, right. the Coven of Witches, right. to get her powers back. Right. That Which, is really yeah. the whole premise of the show. And this was going on in the second episode. She runs into characters played by uh, Broadway uh, legend Patty Lupone, uh, SNL alum Shashir Zameda, and um, and Kitty Foreman, who was uh, Deborah Jo Rupp, who was in WandaVision, uh, gets recruited. Mm-hmm. And then there's the young man played by Joe Locke, whose mystery, whose identity is still a mystery. He even tries to tell his backstory and his his voice is obscured. There's a spell. Out. Yeah, like, yeah, there's yeah, something that's yeah. keeping us from finding out who he really is. Early speculation is it could be one of Wanda's fake kids. Uh, you know, and the whole uh, mystery in the first episode is that there's a dead body discovered. Signs are kind of pointing to the fact that it could be Wanda because, you know, well, the last time we saw Wanda Maximoff is when she went full villain in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness and she was destroyed in the temple in Wondegore and blah, blah, blah. So we shall see. Yeah, the second episode uh, goes into that and then they embark on their mission. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Nine episodes. Uh, so the next uh, we got two this week. So there's eight left. Uh, seven left. So over the next seven weeks, it was, is my math good? Nine, ten, seven. Very good. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. But again, it's it's it seems to be easier access for you know. And I I, I haven't seen streaming numbers. I guess I haven't looked into it that deftly. But uh, apparently, it's the lowest <laughs> review or no, the, it's the lowest lower than the actual. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> it, exactly. And it's got the score. The critic critical score is not high on the show. Um. And I don't know if it just has to do with people are just tired of Marvel and just Disney. Yeah. Or Disney Plus. Disney and Plus. And Star Wars. Yeah. Too. I don't know. It's maybe it's just we're we're they're just like come, come tell us to come back when something feels really good. Yeah, you know? right. Wait, um, wait, wake me up when something is great. So um, but anyway, we'll stick on this. April's all about it. I like it. it though. Yeah. April's all about it. I, mean, I enjoyed it and we'll watch it. And so yeah, if it's more for us than it is for them, that's great for us. Uh, it's not great for Disney because if they don't have them, the regular people watching this, they're, they're toast. Um, so we'll see. I mean, um, you had Catherine Hahn's butt in it. Come on. We sure did. And her boobs obscured by long hair. But the, the butt was nice. She's, you know what? She still got it. Um, all right. Moving along. Now, Todd, you watched maybe seven minutes of this. <laughs> And I watched the whole thing. That's but, why I watched a part of something. This right, was exactly. Like, that's what I did. I watched part of Penguin. But yeah. over on Max, yeah, we've got Penguin, which is a follow-up to The Batman from 20, 2021. This would be the mm-hmm. Robert uh, Pattinson Batman, uh, which I uh, famously fell asleep in the middle of, have never rewatched. Um, but the beauty of it is, is that they give you a nice little recap in the beginning. Hey, blah, 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 Gotham. There was an explosion and the seawall flooded and Gotham is in bad shape and this thing and that thing. And it walks you right into uh, an incredibly, incredibly made up uh, uh, character of the Penguin played by Academy Award winner Colin Farrell, who is really nailing it. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, he's uh, in the first scene, which Todd saw, uh, he's breaking back into his own iceberg lounge, which was, you know, destroyed or severely damaged in the flood. And uh, I, I mix up my crime family. The Maronis and the Fal is the Falcones are in power, and the Maronis guy in Clancy Brown is Maroney, which you saw in the trailers and stuff. And yep. he, he's the yep. one who's in prison. So Carmen Falcone was uh, played by John Turturro in the first film and got whacked. Because, yeah, that's what's established yep. in this, yes. Yep, that's what it's, it's about. Basically, there's a yeah. power vacuum right. within. It's, it's so funny because when they're doing like the the Gotham City News Network, right, they're openly talking about these crime right. lords. Well, it, so-and-so is a crime that, lord, yeah. and I'm like, I don't really, you know, maybe we don't have crime lords here in West Michigan. I'm not sure. Or if they do, we just don't know about them. You got any good crime I mean, lords there in, in We, in we don't refer to them cities? as crime lords, yeah, typically. Right. We just refer to them as, you know, the, the something family. And the, they do, yeah. yeah. The, yeah. The, the yeah. such and such family, exactly. So, yeah. um, but again, Todd, not having seen this, I'm not going to tell you a whole lot more. 
Um, but uh, it's well played out. The uh, so you do have the the son of Falcone is uh, the actor who played the husband on the marvelous Miss Maisel, which is a show in the, that April and I loved. Um, the 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 daughter child in the Falcone family is the mother from How I Met Your Mother, who shows up later in the episode. Um, and yeah, and then uh, Penguin, uh, there you know new characters introduced. What can I say? Uh, and this was a weird one. So this was on last. Thursday, as you're listening to this when it comes out, and the uh, second episode won't be on until next week, Sunday, 9 p.m. on Max, which is the typical Game of Thrones. It's your Sunday night event show. So this will be a Sunday night event show that will go on for eight more episodes or something like that, if I, I'd be willing to get, or maybe 10. They do 10 on Max, typically, do they not? Because like Game of Thrones is... Um, it depends. I mean, but yeah, yeah, it's not going to be a really long-running series, but yeah. this does remind me a lot of... Um, the show Gotham yeah, that was totally. on Fox, which I, which was a show that was like at its points did really cool things, brought in some really cool takes on some of the characters. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it got like really goofy and weird. And then it was like, but then we we're coming yeah. back again and I did yeah. enjoy the show for what it was. But this one is, is, you know, yeah, Batman exists now. Yeah. And I'm like, how are they going to avoid Batman? It's going to be like the, like the, like the Spumco where you have the Spider-Man universe with no Spider-Man, Batman universe with yeah, no I mean, Batman. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's going to maybe there will be him like maybe this is all about Penguin laying low and doing some things, yeah. you know, pulling the strings and maybe Batman's taking down bigger targets where he's laying right. low. Maybe that's what yeah. we'll see. Maybe we'll see like we'll hear, "Oh, the Batman took down another took down uh, and warehouse." So. So blah blah blah. Game. And maybe yeah. yeah, maybe the penguin is like kind of pointing misdirection over to that side Ooh, so in go. some ways helping batman by helping himself uh fun easter egg at one point he drives by something that says like burgess meatpacking or something burgess meredith i thought you'd like that one but yeah i nice. I, I spared you the easter egg but uh yeah this and it's this is fun. i can't remember was the batman r-rated because this he, he's at you know they're effing and jeffing and using bad language all throughout this so i can't remember this is very adult uh, which you would expect because it was a very adult kind of film. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't Batman 66. It was, it was edgy, which, you know, that's how most people. So the Batman. Batman 2022, we lied, Charlie. It was 2022. Okay, very good. Sadly. And it was, what is the rating? Do I even see a rating here? There's a lot of F-bombs in this bad boy. So it was definitely. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I don't remember it being our, I, I think it was PG-13. I, yeah, but I it definitely so had too. an edge. Yeah, yeah. It, it had an edge that's a little edgier. So anyway, uh, yeah, you'll be able to tune into that on Max uh, on the 29th, if I'm not mistaken, and then it'll be on on Sunday night. So, all right. Well, we we pulled a double header at the movies this week because we saw Transformers 1, which we're going to talk about in a moment here. And then I've been wanting to see this movie, which was a big hit at Cannes. And it was funny. I was talking to you and John, and I'm like, people. Cans? Yeah, ca- yeah, yeah, I know. It's... <laughs> It's a bad setup for as much as as, as much nudity as this movie. It's it's I thought, I thought it was the Cannes Film Festival. No, the big one overseas. No, the Cannes Film Festival. Ca- it's French. Ca- yes. But anyway, yes. uh, this film for me negates the fact that well, this got a 13 minute standing ovation at Cannes. Blah blah blah. Because uh, we saw the Substance, which is a French film. Uh, French-made film, anyway, and made in Paris, so I guess it is entirely a French film, uh, starring Demi Moore as an uh, a seasoned uh, aerobics professional who's had a 40-year career doing a program, and she is now, you know, Demi Moore is 61, so you're somebody that's kind of follows the age of this character, gets the axe uh, from her boss, who is a very flamboyant TV producer, uh, played by Dennis Quaid, who was originally Ray Liotta was cast in this role, and then he died oh. before production started, and then Dennis Quaid was yep. added on. Um, but uh, through uh, a you know random and chance encounter, she learns about a uh, biometric process called the substance, which when you take it, uh, it gives you everything you want in intervals of creating a younger self for yourself which can only sustain for seven days and then you have to switch back and you if you don't stick to the rules bad stuff happens so yep you're doing this i'm trying to th- is it like your skin pulls back I and will, like reveals another one i almost person? don't want to tell you how it happens because it's body horror okay. 
but uh, it, it's not the face. So it's not like where it's not like American Werewolf in London, for example, where it's just yeah. yeah. But uh, she does uh, acquire the substance. She takes it, and then she essentially gives birth, though not quite in that fashion, to a twenty-year-old young woman who is actually played by. Now I'm drawing a blank on the uh, young lady's name, but she's the daughter of Andy McDowell. Had no idea. Oh. And uh, Andy McDowell and Demi Moore were both in uh, St. Elmo's Fire 40 years ago. I did not know Andy McDowell's in that film. She was. She was the uh, object of the affection of uh, Emilio Estevez's character. Oh. Remember? I know it's been a long time since oh. I've seen that movie. But yeah, at any rate, her. this movie, yeah, so she births a young woman persona named who goes by Sue. Demi's character is Elizabeth Sparkle, which is a ridiculous name, but whatever. What? Robin Sparkle's yes, sister? It's Robert's Sp- no, her mother. Um, and oh. that it's a lot of back and forth as well. The, the two characters share the same consciousness, so they can't really exist without each other. But while one is awake, the other one is comatose. And if okay. she doesn't go back and react, you know, and switch personas within seven days, there are very bad consequences. Um so this is this is as Todd has said, this is a body horror film. Um, there's more nudity in this film than any commercially released film I've ever seen, including Demi Moore, Full Frontal. And let me tell you, at 61, she, she's doing something right. She's had some work, Charlie. She's, she's had some work. She's had, she had some work. She had some work when she did striptease. I think, yeah, and she's clearly had you know worked under her to her face, which older actresses do. Mm-hmm. I understand, yeah. Uh, but yeah, she looks great, and this young woman is mm, very womanly, um, but. The movie is two and ha- almost two and a half hours long, which wow. seems way too long. And I will tell you that when you get to the last 30 minutes, I have rarely seen a film that has gone so far off the rails. It's completely inexplicable. I can't even describe to you what happens in the last 30 minutes of this film. It's so interesting, nuts. So interesting. would I recommend somebody seeing it? Probably at home, if you can turn it off or take a break, because both April and I, we were talking about it as we were driving home, were riddled with anxiety watching this last 30 minutes of this film. A lot of like this, Mm -hmm. your mouth hanging open, just like you can't believe what the hell's going on. It's that crazy. Um, So if if that's your jam, go for it. I don't think this movie is going to do great gonzo of business. I think it's going to do pretty much what Megalopolis is supposed to do next week, which is like maybe four or 5 million. It's opening weekend and not much from there, but apparently it, it's rotten. Tomato score is through the roof. It's critical score is through the roof. We were walking out with a young man and his girlfriend. And this guy was like, this is my second time seeing this. And I brought my girlfriend to see it. Uh, and we absolutely loved it. And I'm like, but we were walking out with two other people and just cracking jokes about it. like, that's the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. You can't even believe it's a theatrical film with Demi Moore, who is an A-list star in her time. Um, so it was, it was absolutely nuts. It's in theaters now. Uh, just buckle up. Cause like I said, the last 15 to 30 minutes is pretty much unlike anything you've ever seen. <laughs> well, she was, she was, uh, Inspire all. Well, she lists David Cronenberg, John Carpenter, David Lynch, and Michael Ham- Haneke as yeah. filmmakers who influenced her. So that is absolutely appropriate. She's yeah. a French director. Think about And yeah. she's only, she has a very yeah. small career filmography, quite yeah. honestly. If you think so, about yeah. uh, The Fly, uh, the 1986 Fly with Jeff Goldblum, which was the yeah. first body horror film I ever saw, there yeah, are, there are sure. definitely alignments with that, with changes mm-hmm. that. Jeff Goldblum's, Jeff Goldblum's character goes through as he becomes a human fly. Yeah. So think about it in that light. It's not <clears throat> it's not gross in the same way, but it's gross in a lot of different ways. Um, so yeah, that's my take on the substance in theaters now. Probably won't be for long. So if it uh, sounds interesting to you, I would jump on it, but it will show up on streaming at some point. But yeah, Todd, I don't I don't know how much you'd enjoy it, but uh, uh, I won't spoil anything. So. I'm curious. I am curious about it because I keep hearing about this movie and people keep s- avoiding certain things. I'm like, hmm, okay. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I just have to see part of this movie to get that satisfied. The gist. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. All righty, Rue. Well, good. Well, that wraps us up here at the Geek Easy. Time to skip out on the check yet again. I don't know why they keep letting us back in here, but I've got my Air Qantas app out. Time to book a flight to the land down under where Hologram Tina and the mutants await us to discuss... Transformers 1. Let's do it. Welcome to another edition of Thunderdome! 
Thank you, Tina. The mutants have been gathered for a topic or a game to be entertained, and this week we are doing Transformers 1. Do, do, this do, movie do. released on September 19th in theaters, or September 20th, I guess would be Friday. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, a film that is essentially the first animated film in over 40 years with the Transformers. There's been Transformers animated series, but not on the big screen. This is the untold origin story of Optimus Prime and Megatron, better known as sworn enemies, but once were friends bonded like brothers who changed the fate of Cybertron forever. We had uh, basically Orion Pax and D16 uh, as those uh, characters before they became the Transformers we know you and knew, love you, and hate. You knew them when, yes, exactly. And exactly. we had uh, we had Chris Hemsworth uh, Thor as uh, Pax, and then we had uh, Brian Tyree Henry, who was I we just watched Eternal, so I know this this character was Fastos. But if you're a fan of the TV show Atlanta, he was Paperboy the rapper, which I tend to remember, remember him more fondly as. Uh, yeah, as and the he's uh, also been in the Godzilla films, yes, very notable role. <laughs> And then we had we had Scarlett Johansson. I was doing some uh, reading. She played uh, the character. Who, is that RC? Does she become RC? No, Alita one. No, no, no. But I thought Alita who, one. Who was it? Was that the name of her character in the Aftertime? I thought maybe she was. I thought that was RC. Wasn't RC the the only like female Transformer from the eighties? Um, RC is one of the other female characters. There you yeah, go. I mean, well, that in my yeah, brain, that's yeah. what I thought. I, because they all, you know, they transition. They they go through the film at the end of it. They're they're all changed characters. B one twenty seven. Yeah, became Bumblebee. Yeah, you yeah. had yeah Keegan. Yeah. Michael Key and there was a there was a fun uh, Easter egg in there that I'll that I'll mention later that I'm sure you got that relates back to his time on Key and Peel. I'm sure you picked up on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we did get uh, Key, yeah Steve Buscemi as Starscream, which was great. Yeah, I loved, loved him being that. Yeah, uh, Lawrence Fishburne playing Alpha Trion, one of the older um, right. Uh, primes through time. Uh, John Hamm uh, playing a great tongue in cheek role as Sentinel Prime. It almost uh, almost didn't sound like him for a while. I was like, I thought John Hamm was in this movie. I couldn't quite pin it down, but I was almost yeah, sure it was him. He, yeah. Well, he does that that new that new show, uh, not Meropolis. It's it's the Meropolis. it's the show where he plays the the it's an animated show where he plays an old detective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You talked about brought before, back. Yeah. yeah, he plays that. It, I, I he was doing that type of voice, which I really liked. Um, but other than that, not a lot of other real known actors uh, playing the voices of them, which is fine. Um, but yeah, and then Josh Cole, Cooley directed this, and he directed. He's got a really good resume. He, yeah. Uh, he worked in Pixar for many, many years and Ooh. he last directed Toy Story 4. Mm -hmm. So he's got some chops when it comes to anima animation. So appreciate that. He also uh, wrote the story for uh, Toy Story 4, but he yeah. did not write the story for Transformers 1. He actually did a voice of Skywarp as well in the movie. I gotcha. So, yeah. So this movie um, is, I mean, we've never got on Transformers origin. Uh, before right. and I liked how they explain the origin of it. Basically, right. you've got uh, Orion Pax, uh, Pax Orion. I always screwed up. Uh, Orion Pax. He was trying to break in to the archives to figure out what happened because yeah. you know essentially the the energon has dried up. We've got the rest of the primes have disappeared. Now right. we've got Sentinel Prime, and He's they're the looking yeah. for the the matrix of leadership will, which right. will bring back the energy. Well, just and, to, if I might, just to dial it back a little bit more, and I don't yeah. know if this was established lore, but I thought it was great because setting up, you know, in your very first scene where you have, uh, Chris Hemsworth sitting there listening to the archive recordings. Well, they that's what I'm saying. He was yeah. breaking into the right. archives and they but, explained it there. Yeah. But they, what yeah. they explained was that Cybertron itself was a dude who transformed into a planet, which I Primus. I didn't know yeah. about that. I don't know if that came from anything or they just decided to throw that in there, but that's brilliant. And they said, yeah, back in the, back in the old days, you know, the Energon, which is the source of everybody's life just flowed through the planet and then it stopped. And nobody knows why. So now they have to dig for it. So they have a whole subculture of miners. There's apparently one town and they all live underground and the surface is uninhabitable, or at least that's the great icon city. Yeah, yep. that's the great uh, posit uh, because uh, Sentinel Prime, John Hamm, keeps going to the surface and oh, I'm on these very dangerous expeditions because they're at war with an, uh, an invading alien species called the help me out here. Who is the bad guys? Quintessons, because the they have. They don't show it on this one, but they had five different heads. 
Like they would go. Ch- oh, <laughs> like there was a uh, uh, triclops in the masters of the universe. The guy with the yeah. three faces that you, you yep. see, he had the figure spun his head around. Um, and yeah, but yeah, tr- uh, Sentinel prime would. And again, he's kind of a superstar. He's like, uh, I won't say like Homelander because, but, or, you know, he's like some big, like Captain America kind of guy, like, oh my God, everybody idolizes him, but maybe he's, maybe he's more than meets the eye. He's everybody's best friend. Yep. He's, he's very super, very, very happy to uh, lead people, tell them what they want to hear. He's right. very much a politician. Yep. Um, he even offers up every year they do the, the, the icon race. Right. Basically where Pod racing. Can, there's champions that race against each other. Right. And that is kind of like what gets everybody hyped up and the, Hey, he gives people the day off from the mines. Um, to basically watch the right. the so basically very much like the Romans right. distracting the people by giving them the games and now and now we'll throw you back in the lion pit or keep building the pyramids <laughs> the next day exactly yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, it, I mean, this basically is, is a story about the two of them, Chris Hemsworth, Brian Tyree Henry. Very, very good chemistry between, I think, all of the actors. Yeah. Um, and that we get the kind of their story. And what really tips the scale for everything is when it's revealed of what happened to the primes. Right. And the fact that uh, we're, they were given a, a uh, basically uh, a falsehood that's changed everyone's life. They all the uh, every transformer is supposed to have a cog right. that allows them to transform, and well, no, and none of the miners these- do. Yeah, they're all brought exactly. online with no cog because because they're told the big lie. Well, that's not for that's not for you. That's not for everybody. Um, where right. it is, it is for everybody. Every that's why they're called transformers, not because they can't transform. Um, so yeah, so that this was this movie was about. And again, maybe it was. I know we were talking about this with our partner John, and he was like, "Yeah, I have no interest in that because it sounds like what do you like them to like the Lion King." He liked it like it was, yeah. But I'm like, there's know, like five plots. There's like yeah. five plots in every That's movie, and it's true. like how you tell the story. Yeah, You're, and, I mean, yeah, it's, and, it's, and it's, I think yeah, when you have uh, you know friends who are you know they're 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 in it together until they they come to a crossroads where they have an ideological uh, uh, difference, and that's what happened here. Because yeah, you have you know the uh, D26 character uh, goes is filled with a lot of anger, so his anger and confronted with the situation takes him in a direction uh, that uh, Pax who's our Optimus Prime, uh, goes in a different direction. And, you know, so, and they meet the Royal Guard uh, is, again, that's Starscream. And I know, I, I was able to pick out, Todd, I know you're the Transformers guy between the two of us, but I was able to pick out that there was Starscream and Thundercracker and there was Ravage, little cassette yep. tape and Soundwave and Shockwave. And they were all there, man. And they were all just their, their regular selves. Because um, I'm trying to think back. So I'm thinking about the first episode of the Hasbro series, the the Sunbow series from 84, Mm -hmm. because it has to do with, you know, forward from this point that, you know, uh, they've been at war and they, they, they launch on a ship together, the Ark or something. Well, the energy on resources are essentially depleted. So they need to go and find new sources. The Autobots take off, the Decepticons chase them and shockwaves, shockwaves left behind basically to run the planet uh, while everything goes on. So that's kind of what what led them. And then they, yeah, they create, Crash on Earth, and but it's in prehistory, and it's not until Mount St. Helens erupts in 1980 or something because it takes place in the Pacific Northwest yep. that they're awoken, and then that that's how the whole. That's what I like very barely remember about it, yep. and and then and they have to scan Earth vehicles in order to become them because as you see in this, they transform into things that look like space age vehicles that don't look like it doesn't look like Optimus Prime doesn't look like a truck, and even Megatron, I think when he does get or you know d26 gets the ability to transform he's a tank with a gun not just a gun which is what the original megatron well they they've changed that now yeah Yeah. they basically written out the fact that it was funny though like did teltrin one witness a crime and someone is being shot by gun i'll take the picture of the gun yeah exactly (laughs) i'll turn you into a gun yeah Yeah. i I, I always wondered about that one and he was also became a small gun not a big gun so it was it was kind of an odd thing he shrank and then got bigger and yeah um yeah yeah. yeah, and so in this case, yes, we the, the it's kind of cool because when they when they are told the story of what really happened, mm-hmm. uh, they essentially are given cogs, are four main characters, Lita yeah. One, B one twenty seven, which is Bumblebee. It's funny he's he's he was a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. he didn't he Big time. He, Michael, he Michael Key is always very good at this. I thought he brought a lot of energy to Bumblebee. Um, he was comedic relief and he was funny to watch played very well and they all got their cogs and I thought there was humor when they were first transforming. Yeah. And 
Uh, and with the cog, they changed. They got bigger. They got yeah. a little bit more of that. And I love easy. the fact of how they changed both Chris Hemsworth and Brian Tyree's. Their voices changed over yeah. time. I got to hear that prime gravelly. Yeah. Uh, I got to hear more of that Megatron voice. But I also love Steve, uh, Steve Buscemi as Starscream. Right. When his, his voice got changed. Right. He Megatron grabs him and he him, chokes him it. out. And he, cr- he crushes yeah. his voice box to a certain degree. And then he's raspy. And I'm like, oh, that was pretty clever. Now, uh, yeah. again, just to start step back a little bit what we find out when our characters go to the surface because uh they want to help out and figure out what's going on they find out that sentinel prime is in fact the benedict arnold he's selling all of their energons to the to the villains who show up on the planet and collect um and then in their in their uh travels uh on the desolate uh, surface of Cybertron. I did love the uh, the the elk or the deer, you know, like the little robotic deer going through. Yeah, that. that was a nice touch. Robotic, robotic animals was cute. But, but yeah. they do stumble upon, uh, as you, uh, as you said, L- Lawrence Fishburne as the only survivor of the original. Uh, prime squad and you find out that sentinel prime killed all of them because he's the bad guy but it was because these other um transformers were um destroyed but their cores were still intact that they were able to give them a cog and that now our people could transform um but yes obviously you know and then they stumble upon the royal guard who is all the more traditional decepticons as i was talking about that were kind of like the resistance to take down Sentinel right. prime but they never really did they're right. just sabotaging doing all these things yeah they're the um, they're the yeah the resistance like kind of like the uh you know like the resistance in Battlestar galactica you know what i mean uh but kind of doing little stuff but anyway they all team up but they can't really hold their own against sentinel prime until obviously uh d26 is able to to turn the tide and yeah it was a pretty violent part in that when he finally defeats oh yeah Final prime that he just tears him in half it tears was, him apart yeah, yeah right so and then that's when and then yeah down to the end of it uh he and uh and pax finally come to blows um and pax gets uh shot off of a cliff and partially blown apart but he falls into the core uh of of the planet and kind of like, you know, Thor in the first Thor movie, ironically, because it's Chris Hemsworth in that moment, he's found worthy by the planet core guy, whose name again Primus. was Primus, mm-hmm. who then gives him, you know, Mjolnir or the core of leadership. Because he makes a sacrifice. Because he makes yep. a sacrifice. It's, it's exactly, yep. it's like you said, the same five, five plot lines. And then he comes back and now he's Optimus Prime and saves the day and sends Megatron and his gang packing uh, to the surface uh, and that was one of the uh, that was one of the uh, uh, stinger scenes was uh, seeing these guys deb themselves the Decepticons and they all Sometimes, gave themselves because they had been deceived. They, so yeah. we're going to now and they all deceived. they all branded themselves with the with the symbol that was uh, uh, one of one of D twenty Megatronus Megatronus. I think so. Yes. Why not? Or it could be a dinosaur. I don't know. Although we do get those eventually too with you know the the Dinobots and Grimlock, <laughs> but not in this yes. one. But obviously, yeah, so we did that yeah. stinger at the end. They did, of um, course, tee this up to be like, well, when the Quintessons come back, we're ready for them. And so it was kind that of that was a little cheesy. Yeah, that was, was a little cheesy. I'm like, was, I'll yeah. take it, though. Yeah, it's what they call over on Weekly Planet to start your engines where they were setting up a franchise. So here we go. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But well, it's it's great to have the Quintessons be another threat versus just oh it's 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 megatron versus optimus prime again yeah because you know we've already seen some it's like it's like the battle between you know darth vader and obi-wan kenobi how many times can obi-wan kenobi beat the crap out of of darth vader in one way or the other it's happened a million times right vader never wins we don't need to see it again so it's cool that they're bringing the quintus on as a big threat uh which is kind of neat because i mean yeah you and was that built some layers? Was that new? Were the Quintessons? Was that new? That wasn't new. That was from something else. No, that was like if you think about the when Rodimus Prime came over, took over as Prime. We brought and the Quintessons were essentially in, seen in um, Transformers the movie oh, for very short bit I with the Sharkticons. I haven't seen yeah. that in so long, so you got me there. Yeah, <clears throat> but they were a big part of the later seasons of Transformers the cartoon. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. yeah. You know, that's yep. one of those that I would I would seek it out and watch it again. But I feel like much like with the Sunbow G.I. Joe cartoons, they're kind of unwatchable. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but it all happened at the same time. I just watched them, Charlie, at that Transformers 40th event. Yeah. And it was fun having 
the team that did it with the voice talent and the people behind it talk about it. That was far more entertaining than watching the episodes. Yeah, that, that's that was my, a cool yeah, way to do it. That's my fear. Yeah. I mean, the background, like I love behind the scenes stuff and I'm always fascinated by how it's made and blah, blah, blah and secret stuff. But yeah, the, the stories and, and that kind of stuff, it kind of feels like it might fall flat. So yeah, I, I enjoyed this tremendously. I thought this was great, and especially after since 2007, having one terrible Transformer something after another. Yep. Um, this and will this, be the only decent one. Yeah, in there. exactly. I but I know, I know, going through and doing some of the uh, <clears throat> some of the some of the reading on this, that this is the highest rating as far as Rotten Tomatoes goes that there yeah. has been of any Transformers project. Did very well. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they oh even James even uh, James uh, actor James Remar had a role. He was great. He was Dexter's dad and Dexter. And mm -hmm. he was one of the yeah. warriors in the warriors, which is a movie I hate uh, that I love. And April hates. Um, but, uh, yeah, I I totally dug it. This was fun for me. I wish they could do something like this for G.I. Joe. I would be all for it. If they could give us an yes. animated G.I. Joe film that would just re-engage with what made the series great and what made the line great. Um, but unfortunately, we are getting another live action adaptation where they stick it together. with. But with the Transformers work. this time, Charlie. I'm, 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 That's what will fix it. I mean, obviously, I will see it because I'm a, I'm a G.I. Joe diehard, but I, I don't I, I had good feelings about this when we learned about this about a year or so ago. I was excited about this. Um, I just this is just kind of where it belongs. It's it's an animated property. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and G.I. Yep. Joe is as well. So um, may I <clears throat> simply hope, you know, maybe it'll take another decade and they'll finally figure out they should do this with G.I. Joe. I hope so. That's my hope. So uh, we need to give our rating. So yes. out of on the power card you used to have on the back of Ooh, the uh, Transformers the little, little dads. with their abilities and everything, you had to have the little red thing you took out so you right. could see what it truly was. Right. Uh, out of a, 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 that power scale of 10, Charlie, what would you give the Transformers? This was a solid eight and a half, without a doubt. Anything that was um, was corny or start your engines, you're like, oh, we're setting it up for the sequel. Uh, I found to be negligible. Um, so yeah, I was totally all about this. This was this was a blast. I'd recommend it uh, for anyone. There was uh, a, a mother with her two kids, one of whom was probably four or five, uh, who was really enjoying the hell out of this. And that's that's great. If we can go and enjoy it, and the young people can get into it as well, uh, hopefully has a chance for success. Looks like globally for the weekend, it's going to pull about thirty nine million twenty five here in the U S. Which is not gargantuan. I don't know what their goals were for it, but hopefully, it's hard to tell. Yeah, hopefully it's enough to keep it going because I would definitely be interested in seeing another one of these. So yeah, good stuff. What about you? <clears throat> um, I really enjoyed myself. I'd give this one like an eight out of 10 because um, while I did like the animation style, I liked I loved a lot of the battles and I didn't, I, I did also love that they did embrace kind of like a good mixture of the G1 <laughs> with, you know, some, some adaptations, which is fine. Um, I wanted something a little bit more at the end and the cheesy part was a little like, oh, okay. Yeah, right. And they kind of explained some things, <clears throat> but I mean, hey, this is what I wanted. I wanted a coherent film that was more endearing and making the robots, you know, once again, having personalities and really standing out versus needing to add humans to the mix. I was going to say so that I, was, I really liked it. That was the greatest triumph. No people, <laughs> Yes, <laughs> which they couldn't have because exactly. it wouldn't, it wouldn't have fit in with the stories because it was, you know, no. on a planet of robots can't really have people. <clears throat> so this was no. good. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, <clears throat> I, 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 I kind of wish this was more like one step above kind of like a hitting that, either the new TMNT movie or uh, yeah. the new, you know, the Spider-Verse films. I wish they could just take it up a little bit notch with some yeah. of the art style, make it a little bit more iconic, but maybe yeah. the next one if they do it. Yeah, let's hope so. So, yeah, that's our last uh, big uh, film. And this is our last week before we get into Shocktober. Spooky time, because, yeah, we kick off our next episode uh, talking about uh, the first of five horror movies that we're talking about this season. But we won't spoil that. We will simply uh, wrap the show up. Uh, thank you, people. As all uh, people are wonderful listeners for joining us, Todd. Where do people find you out there? Yes, thank you, people. Thank uh, you. <laughs> we like you, people. Thank you for engaging in our content. Beep bop boop. <laughs> no, they find me at Threads at Tioxtra at Seek Friends You. <laughs> Uh, unite, sorry, and then check out our Discord, our website, and our YouTube channel, and give us some likes and give us a rating on podcast services around the galaxy. Woo! 
I will say all those things, but you can also find me on Instagram and threads at the C3, T-H-E-C-E-E-T-H-R-E-E. Having a good time. Also playing over on our Discord. Also run a Discord uh, for Trekkers uh, in the Midwest called the United Trekkers of Michigan. We would love to have you on board if you'd like to talk about Star Trek. But yeah, find us everywhere podcasts are found. uh, Like, rate, and subscribe to us. And check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash Secret Friends Unite, seven days for free. And it's fun stuff. But with that, I will bid you adieu. I will tell you, as always, that sharing is caring and to keep on trucking. Be the hero, not the villain. In a truck. And we roll out. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and podcast services around the galaxy, as well as video on our YouTube channel. You can support Secret Friends Unite by becoming a Patreon member, get bonus programs and more over at patreon.com slash secretfriendsunite. Join our Discord community for even more discussions on all things geek. For all the latest updates on Secret Friends Unite, make sure to follow us on threads at secret.friends.unite and visit secretfriendsunite.com. Find our merchandise at TeePublic and Redbubble. Thanks for listening and may the force live long and prosper.